I know them. And they follow me. And they follow him because they recognize his voice. They know the shepherd. And they're willing to follow. Again, if we think about our children, our children will follow us because they know our voice as their parents. And they trust that voice. But if a stranger says, I want you to do this or I want you to do that, they won't listen. Or hopefully they won't listen because they don't recognize that voice. They don't know that person. But God, the more we bring ourselves into His presence, we come to recognize His voice speaking to us. And we respond. Another, if we were to make this His year, we would meditate on His Word. And again, you can hear how these are twined together. In Psalm 119, it says to us, How can a person keep his way pure? By living according to your Word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. You see, if we don't meditate on God's word, there's no way we're ever going to know what it is he wants for us. There's no way that we're ever going to recognize his voice. There's no way that we're ever going to march into the new day without fear. If we don't know what God has to say to us. David goes on to proclaim, I rejoice in following your statutes as one who rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Your word is a lamp to my feet. And it is a light to my path. What might it mean if we meditated on God's Word? And again, it goes back to looking at reading through God's Word in this coming year. And whether it takes a year, two years, three years, what it means is being in God's Word on a regular basis. That we might understand what He has to say to us. Another, we would give God control of our lives, complete control. And please hear that word, complete control control. We would submit ourselves. We would humble ourselves. We would come to that place where we do what it was talking about. We would let go. We would let go. And this applies to our spiritual lives. It applies to our service. It applies to our giving. It applies to every aspect of our lives. Not just this piece or that piece but to all of our lives. James in the fourth chapter says this, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Come near to God and He will come near to you. Humble yourselves before the Lord, He says, and He will lift you up. He will lift you up. And Jesus taught time and again that the one who seeks to exalt themselves will be the one that will be humbled. And the one who is willing to humble themselves and submit themselves to God will be raised up. You see, so often we think that if we have control of our lives, then everything's going to be just fine. But I don't know about you, but I have found over the years that my life goes a whole lot smoother when I let God have the control and I stop taking the control. Because even though I might think I can do it better, I find out time and time again, God just lets me go ahead and says, now see, you really think you can do it better? Because we can't. The call is for us. Again, is to come close to God and let Him draw close to us. He's so willing and so ready. And it's not that God's not drawing close to us, it's that we are oftentimes holding Him back. We need to learn to let go and to truly let God come into our lives. 
Another, we would stop trying so hard to make it. We would stop trying so hard to make it. And again, how do we define making it? Okay, I've made it in life. What does that mean? What does that mean? What determines the, the definition? How do we know when we have made it? What might happen if we worry more about what God wanted for our lives than what we think we need or what others tell us we ought to have or our lives ought to be about? What if instead of us trying so hard to make it in life, it became a year where we said, God, this is your year. This is his year. And in everything that I do, I want God to be the one to determine where I go and what I do. Now, that doesn't mean we just become mindless robots and say, okay, God, just guide and direct me. We work with him. We pray. We read his word. We seek his face. But God speaks to our heart. And are we willing to, again, let go to listen? Because you see, friends, when we do, then I believe truly we will make it. But making it will be defined not by us or by others. It will be defined by God. And I firmly believe that we might not ever in this life come to that place where we fully understand what it means to make it. But I believe as we listen to God and as we move through and as we allow Him to be the one who speaks to our hearts and guides and directs our steps and leads us into the new day, we will make it when we come before Him and hear the words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Things that we looked at this morning I believe are summed up in the words that we heard read that we began with. In Joshua, he tells us, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Not just in some places, but wherever you go. I like the way Peterson in the message puts that same passage. He says, give it everything you have, heart and soul. Haven't I commanded you? Strength, courage, don't be timid, don't get discouraged. God, your God, is with you every step you take. But you see, again, that means that we have to be willing to let go. Because as long as we're trying to drive the bus, so to speak, it isn't going to happen that way. But let God, your God, who promises to be with you every step, let Him be the one to guide you. This year and every year, friends, I pray that whether it's in the midst of life's struggles or in the midst of life's celebrations, that we remember that the Lord our God is with us wherever we find ourselves and we seek His face and we become a people who truly are willing to let go and to let God. That we might be a people as we heard proclaimed in the Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him. And what will He do? He will make your path straight. You wonder why sometimes life seems like it's so windy? Maybe it's because we're trying to take all the steps on our own. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Don't try to figure this out all by yourself. But in all your ways, acknowledge Him, and God will make your path straight. Peterson in the message says it this way. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Here we go again. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go. He is the one who will keep you on track. <clears throat> this morning, my friends, as we come to celebrate Holy Communion, it's appropriate that we do that as we enter into this new year because it's a time when we celebrate God's presence in our lives, His holy presence. It's a time when we celebrate His grace that promises to give to us a new start, a fresh start. It's a time that calls us to remember all that He has done for us. It's a time that calls us to remember His faithfulness to us. And it's a time when we come to not only celebrate, but it's a time when we come, I pray, to boldly declare as we not only come to the table, but more importantly go forth and prepare to go out into the new day. You know, God, I want to make this your year. I want this to be his year. Don't know exactly where God's going to take me. Don't know exactly where God's going to take us. But we're going to trust you, God. Because you've given to us your promise when we trust in you with all our hearts. And we don't lean on our own understanding. <coughs> you will make our path. Will lead us into the new day. And we will, we will find blessing. Will you pray with me? Oh God, we give you thanks and praise for this new year that lies before us. We have no idea what it holds, but we know you are the one who not only holds all of our days, but you hold us. For that, we give you thanks and praise. As we come to this, your holy table, O oh God, the table that your Son Jesus set before us, help us, we pray, to allow this to be a celebration anew of the wonder of your love and your grace extended to us freely. A love and grace that redeems us, that sets us free, a love and grace that calls us into the new day, trusting in you and in you alone. <coughs> Bless us as we come to this your table, O oh God. But more importantly, bless us as we go forth. And help us, we pray, by the power of your Holy Spirit, to be a people who are willing to let go. And to let go. We ask it in Jesus' name.